So we've just come back from Canada and I figured it's been a while since we've done a Tea Time Tuesday video. So that's gonna be today, except for I'm having a coffee because when I have my coffee, I like to enjoy something that's a little bit sweet with it. And I'm gonna be having this double chocolate chunk vegan cookie. I'm gonna show you how to make this particular recipe along with two other chocolate vegan dessert recipes. Now these recipes are really awesome to take with you to potlucks, birthday parties, if friends and family are coming over to visit, or you can just make it for yourself and freeze any extras that you have and enjoy it later when your sweet tooth strikes. And I also wanna just take a quick second to thank Wix for sponsoring today's video. Wix is the amazing platform I use to create the Pickup Limes website. So I'm gonna speak a little bit more about them at the end, but for now I also wanted to let you know that all of the recipes I'm sharing today can be found on the blog. As usual, the links to those are in the description box below. All right. Let's dive in. We'll begin by making the chewy double chocolate chip cookies that I just showed you. For this recipe, you'll need half a cup of refined coconut oil, not melted, two thirds a cup of brown sugar, three tablespoons of maple syrup, half a cup of plant-based milk, I used soy, a third a cup of cacao powder, a tablespoon of pure vanilla extract, two cups of flour, I just used an unbleached all-purpose flour, a cup of chopped dairy-free dark chocolate, half a teaspoon of instant coffee granules, half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking powder, and three quarters a teaspoon of baking soda. Now there's a couple of ingredients I know I'm gonna get questions about, so I wanna bring those up right now actually. The first ingredient I wanna mention is cacao powder. I use it in every single one of these recipes. And the reason I use cacao powder is because it's a bit more rich in antioxidants and it gives a little bit more of like a chocolatey flavor in my opinion, more so than cocoa powder. But I have used both in the past. Honestly, they both work, so use whichever one you've got on hand. The second ingredient I wanted to mention was coconut oil. I use refined coconut oil instead of unrefined coconut oil. And the reason being it doesn't impart that kind of coconutty flavor, but again, use whichever one you prefer. So to a large bowl, we'll add the solid coconut oil and the brown sugar and using a fork, cream it all together. If you can't see any more chunks of coconut oil, you can then add the vanilla extract, give it a quick mix before adding the maple syrup, plant milk, cacao powder, and instant coffee granules. And the instant coffee granules are optional, by the way, it just helps to bring out the flavor of the chocolate a little bit more. And then add in the baking soda, baking powder and salt, and mix it once again. Now, if the temperature is hot where you are, like it was on this particular summer day, just plop the mixture in the fridge for a few minutes so it firms up. Otherwise, the cookies spread too much when they're baking. If it's cool where you are, just omit this step. Now, after removing the bowl from the fridge, I added in the flour and I mixed it until it was just combined. You wanna make sure you don't over mix it, so add the chocolate chunks near the end and gently fold it into the mixture. The dough should resemble a traditional thick and sticky cookie dough mix. Now we can form little balls out of the dough and evenly distribute it onto a baking sheet, leaving about five centimeters between each because the cookies will spread when it's baking. I like to press it down a little bit and top it with a couple of chocolate chunks. Then bake it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius for about 12 to 15 minutes until the top looks set. Let it cool for one minute on the cookie sheet before transferring it to a cooling rack to cool completely. And I've taken this to a few potlucks already and it finishes really quickly, so I gather that everyone really enjoys these ones. For the next dessert, we'll be making another one bowl recipe, but this time it's double chocolate banana muffins. For this recipe, you'll need a tablespoon of ground flax seeds, three tablespoons of water, three medium ripe bananas, three quarters of a cup of sugar, a third a cup of unsweetened applesauce, one and a half cups of flour, a third a cup of melted coconut oil, a quarter cup cacao powder, a third a cup of chopped dairy-free dark chocolate, a teaspoon each of baking soda, baking powder, and pure vanilla extract, and half a teaspoon of salt. We'll start by adding the flax seeds and water to a large bowl and then let it sit to gel. Meanwhile, you can lightly grease a muffin tin or add in some paper liners. When you return to the flax mixture, it should be all gelled up and then you can add the bananas and mash them as well as you can. The more ripe the bananas are, the easier they'll be to mash, the sweeter the muffins will be and the more of a banana taste it'll impart. When it's as mashed as you can make it, then you can add in the sugar, applesauce, coconut oil, vanilla and salt and then mix it all together again. Then add the cacao powder, baking soda, baking powder, and mix it again one more time. When you think you've mixed it well enough, then you can add in the flour a third at a time, mixing just a little bit before adding the next third. Again, whenever you're dealing with flour, you wanna make sure that you don't over mix it. After you've added the last bit of flour, you can sprinkle on the chocolate chunks and gently fold it into the mixture. 
Then evenly distribute the batter into muffin tins. It should fill the tins nearly to the top. And then you can top each muffin with some reserved chocolate chunks and bake it in the oven at 375 Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius for about 15 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Allow it to cool for a couple minutes before you transfer it to a cooling rack to cool completely. I made this particular recipe for Christmas a couple years back and no one knew they were vegan and I always love it when that happens. Now this last recipe is one of my favorites. It's a raspberry chocolate pudding, a super wholesome recipe that tastes so good, no one would believe it's good for them too. For this recipe, you'll need a cup of frozen raspberries, a quarter cup of water, two ripe avocados, six tablespoons of cacao powder, a quarter of a cup of agave syrup, or you can use maple syrup, one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice, and two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, as well as a quarter teaspoon of optional salt. First, we'll add the frozen raspberries and water to a food processor and blend it on high until you achieve a sorbet-like consistency. You can stop to scrape down the sides as needed. Then add all the remaining ingredients at once. So this is the cacao powder, lemon juice, agave syrup, the avocados, vanilla extract, and the salt. Blending again until it's completely smooth, stopping to scrape down the sides once or twice. And that's it. It's a super quick and easy recipe. Best if enjoyed immediately after it's made. It's a dessert I personally like to make when friends and family come over to visit. And you can garnish it with some chocolate chunks, coconut flakes, or raspberries to make it look extra decadent. If you're new to the concept of avocados in your dessert, I imagine you're hesitant, but trust me, it makes this pudding really creamy and you can't taste the avocado at all. If you have any leftovers, you can freeze it to enjoy as an ice cream of sorts later on. I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys create some of these recipes and if you do be sure to tag us on Instagram. I'm going to repost a few of my favorites over the next couple days because I love seeing what you guys create so I want to share it with everybody else. And remember that the breakdown to each of the recipes can be found on the blog so the links are in the description box below. And when you're at our website be sure to look at the layout a little bit. I used Wix to create the Pickup Lines website and when I first wanted to create a website I was really nervous because I didn't have any kind of web development or web design experience and I really wanted to have a website that would look professional and when I used Wix it was just so amazing to see what I could create on my own and to have kind of total creative freedom I just take a few pictures I put it into these blog templates that they provide I can customize it however I'd like so if you've ever been interested in creating your own website but you don't know where to begin and you want to try it out for free try out Wix I'm gonna leave the link for you in the description box below and I'd also like to know in the comments below what other chocolate dessert recipe you'd like to see on the blog I'm thinking like a chocolate brownie recipe or maybe a chocolate ice cream recipe whichever is the most requested I promise will be the next dessert recipe to go up so let me know in the comments I'll see you down there and thanks a lot for watching see you guys in the next video oh so good with coffee mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. I like it when cookies are chewy do you like it crunchy or do you like it when it's soft let me know in the comments I'm kind of sad that it's almost finished but luckily I have 10 more so 